Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. Uh, this video is from a recent live stream I did as part of my solar system tourism series on Twitch. And what we are doing is placing a scanner probe around the moon. You can see we're scanning for resources the normal stock way, no scan sat or anything like that. And uh, there we have resources, but I'm interested in ore because I had configured the stock's uh, ISRU unit to use ore and give us real fuels, in particular liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen, and liquid methane. And so I'm looking for my ore patches, and we see some locations there. And so narrowing it down, it seems like there is a bright patch right there. And so we are going to send an ISRU unit. So this is me building it. I rarely show the build sequences because these days, heck, I just make the parts in Blender. But uh, we'll get to that. Uh, but here I'm mocking up an ISR unit. We have the big, you know, 2.5 meter ISRU thing. And then also a reactor from KSB Interstellar. That's a molten salt reactor that will provide us with power. Uh, NASA will be using reactors in order, in order to provide power for lunar bases. They've got the kilopower crusty unit and uh, other things that they're uh, planning on. So an ISR unit on the moon will probably use that. Uh, here configuring the tanks and the engines are BE-7 engines uh, from Blue Origin. So uh, they're going to be used on one of the landers that are proposed for the moon. And I figure they'd be pretty good in this case since we're going to be making hydrogen and oxygen anyway. And so we want the tanks to be filled up with that. And so I'm sizing the tanks appropriately for the delta V that I want. And... Uh, we've got the ore tanks, very important to remember those. They're not that heavy, thankfully, so that's good. I uh, just make a duplicate there, and we've got four of those tanks. I need uh, to make sure that the center of thrust is directly through the center of mass because it's sort of not exactly symmetrical. We need the landing legs and everything, and we'll have to do a test of it to see if it's properly balanced. We'll do that on the runway with hack grab and so rare things for me these are these are things I don't normally have to do but here we are and uh, here are of course the RCS thrusters and configuring it to Arizine and NTO because I didn't have a Hydrolox configuration for it so we'll just go with Arizine and NTO and I need special Arizine and NTO tanks for the RCS thrusters so that's what I'm making there so here we go copying it over and yep checking the delta v because well we don't want to test it out in hack grav before making sure we have enough delta v to land on the moon all it has to do is land on the moon it doesn't really have to get up into orbit again but of course since it can refuel itself presumably it would be able to get back into orbit again so i set hack grav to lunar gravity but i forgot that we still have the atmosphere and that means that the ISP of these engines is very low. Uh, so I have to actually lower it to below lunar gravity to compensate for the lower ISP. You can see originally I had four engines, uh, four BE-7s, but that was too much thrust. Uh, meaning that if I throw down the engines all the way to the bottom, uh, the, the craft would not go down. We need it to be able to go down uh, when the engines are thrown down. So. Uh, that's why I put two engines, and here it is approaching the location on the moon. There's a reason why I didn't show you the launch. I'm going to cover the launch vehicle that we use in a different video. So uh, there will be a special video for that topic. Uh, this is the topic of this advanced ISRU lander. And so you can see the purple region because I still have it highlighted on the map, and this ore region here. But I do eventually turn that off as much as the purple glow is helpful, especially since we're going to be landing mostly in the dark, actually. Not a problem since we're using a reactor and not solar panels for power here. And that's one of the reasons. Because the moon is, uh, any particular location on the moon is going to be in the dark for 14 days. That's why a reactor is practical. Um, obviously, RTGs are not practical. They don't provide enough power. Uh, so that's you know, for the moon you have to have a reactor otherwise it's not going to be the base is not going to be running for two weeks basically anyway here we are landing and there we go 
So now we have to see about the ISRU configuration and I actually based it, the configuration you see there's a liquid methane option, that's not for the moon. Uh, it was based on Mars regolith and because we're drilling for ore rather than uh, drilling for just pure water and sucking in CO2, uh, just to go with the ore theme, I assumed it was Mars regolith and I took uh, the chemical structure of Mars regolith or at least a certain kind of Mars regolith and decided how much oxygen and hydrogen we could get out of that uh, combining with the atmosphere, the Martian atmosphere, CO2. And so I based the numbers on that, but I think I made a mistake in that I got the by mass numbers instead of by volume, which is why the liquid hydrogen is not replenishing to deal with the boil off. The boil off was going faster than the hydrogen was being produced. So I adjusted the numbers uh, based on the possibility that I accidentally did the mass instead of volume, so I divided by den density in other words. So here we are sending a uh, shortened version of the ILV lander, the Blue Origin slash National Team lander. I, I don't like the Blue Origin National Team lander because of that stupid ascent module, so I just took it off, basically. Now that works if you can refuel it at the base, right? Because if we can uh, fuel up this hydrogen oxygen stage with two BE7s at the bottom, then we don't need the ascent module and we can just reuse this lander. Except that the BE7 engines only have a limited number of ignitions. That's a different thing, different problem. Anyway, I'm using this simple logistics uh, mod and this is really convenient. As long as the objects are in render range, uh, they can sort of hook up to each other. And actually what I want to do is not have them share resources. That's what plugging them both together would be. I want to plug in this resource uh, drill lander and instead have the other one. So I've uh, plugged this in and have the new lander, the crude lander, not plugged in so that we can transfer the hydrogen and oxygen from the other one to this. Uh, now I actually have other stuff on the moon at this point and they are also hooked up to a simple logistics, they're all plugged into simple logistics but those resources are not being shown in the simple logistics there so that's why I say, I mean I don't know for sure if it's render range but I think it's render range that they have to be within. But that saves us a lot of KAS hookup trouble otherwise I'd have to get everything within like 25 meters and hook up pipes or use whatever other thing. So the thing is that the hydrogen and oxygen wasn't produced fast enough. Even if we fix the numbers, it just, it's gonna take many months uh, to top off even these kinds of tanks. Let's not talk about a starship. So in order to refuel, say a starship, we're gonna need but like a whole lineup of these landers, like dozens. Uh, but I bring a second one over and I've trimmed down the parts on it. You can see only one radiator and I've tried to reduce uh, other things, but it's probably not enough. Anyway, we landed close by and see how it works out for us. I, I put the Arizine and NTO in the main tanks just to reduce the part count. That was another thing I did. So anyway, here we go and I'll set the drills and hook it up and it'll do its thing. But still, the drilling speed is low, but I don't feel like the drills are, of this size are gonna be producing more than they are. In other words, they're not gonna be lifting up more ore or regolith than they are right now. And we're not gonna get too much more than these resources from the regolith. I mean, if we hit ice, of course, that's a whole different story. If what we're drilling for is ice, that's much easier to convert than regolith. I mean, we don't really have a practical way of converting, reg uh, taking this stuff out of regolith, to be honest, yet. So that's a whole other topic. But here I am getting the resources. But I decided that I like this lander enough in order to make a more formalized version. And so behold, this is the version that I created in Blender of the same lander, same mass, same features, just all integrate, well not all integrated into one part, mostly integrated into one part. There are a few things that I decided that I would 
leave separate, but the ore tanks became these boxes because I figured uh, boxes with conveyor belts are a heck of a lot more reasonable than like a tank for ore. Uh, so I made little conveyor belts. Basically the idea is that the drilling unit, um, this is the one, uh, will go here on either side. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how the drills are supposed to work in real life anyway. So, but in principle, uh, yeah, that's not quite, uh, we'll have to tuck it in or something a little bit more, but something like that. And so the drills I kept separate uh, the engines I kept separate because we might want to use different engines. Uh, so, but anyway, we'll just slap on some BE sevens here. And another thing I kept, kept to, I kept separate was, though I do have the little mounting nodes, uh, was the radiator. Because, no, there was just a limit to, I, I already have the landing legs animated, so I didn't want to animate the radiators on here as well. So we've got the landing leg, legs built in. So compared to having 30 parts on the thing, this is a great improvement. It'll end up being six parts uh, with the radiator as well. I'm not going to launch it in this episode because this is going to launch on the launcher that I want to talk about separately. Uh, somebody uh, jested in the comments, and I took it very seriously, jested in the comments that my videos were quite long, uh, said something about, uh, what's this uh, raised space video that's not 30 minutes long? No, it's not possible. Well, fine, I'll keep it short. Okay, <laughs> but anyway. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to introduce this thing. I did more detail on this than like anything else I've ever done. Uh, there's this little, I don't know if you can see. I put the little bolts and nuts and bolts on the reactor. So this is the reactor. And the reactor is based on a real reactor uh, from the, the hopefully appropriately named Ultra Safe Nuclear... Um, I, I don't know what the C stands for. Ultra Safe Nuclear Corporation. There we go. So it's an Ultra Safe Nuclear Corporation Tex pylon. And to quote them, the pylon is a low enriched uranium space reactor system. And it's to provide electric power and heat in locations such as Moon, Mars, and outer space. So very appropriate. The reactor will provide one megawatt thermal for a period of 10 years at temperatures of 1150 Kelvin. An integrated Brayton converter will be added to convert this heat to 150 kilowatts. The mass of the pylon is under 5 tons, they say. We have an undersized version of that. I don't want 5 tons. I sized it to the same mass as what we had with KSB Interstellar because that's fine. In the KSV Interstellar one had a much higher output. We we're just going with 150 kilowatts. But yeah, hopefully they can trim that down a little bit. But yep, that's what that is. So it's a apparently real reactor. The, you can see the ISR unit here. You notice the gap that I left here? And that's because this is the moon version of it. There is also a Mars version of it. The Mars version has an additional intake for the CO2, you see. It doesn't really spin. Sorry, I didn't animate the intake. So, yeah. But that's why that, that, that gap was there, so that I could place the intake. So that's an extra spiffy thing. I did even put little ore in the boxes, but the uh, ore in this case is not Mars regolith looking. <laughs> so, uh, somebody had suggested to me to uh, actually have the ore pile up uh, such that you know, to match how much ore we actually have in the vehicle because we have ore containment here, but that is beyond my capabilities. So, yeah. So, I'm rather proud of this. There's a lot of greebling that has happened on this particular thing. It's it's actually the most complex single part I think I've ever seen for Kerbal. I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to be looking forward to putting this to use, and I'll do so in the next video where I'll introduce the launcher that I used for the launches that uh, occurred in the live stream. And that takes some explaining and exploration anyway, but this will be one payload that we are going to launch on that. 
So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.